This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 674 of the Dressage Radio Show, official podcast of the United States Dressage Federation on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products and Trust Design. This week's show will feature dressage trainer and judge Katie Pogue. Karen Isberg joins us to talk about a great product called Trouble Free. Wendy Murdoch comes on to talk about the Surefoot Equine Stability Program. And then we have a surprise behind the scenes treat for the Trust Design tip. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Hi, Phil. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We're uh, we're recording a little extra tonight, so it, it's been a been of a bit of a longer night, but uh, <laughs> um, we've had lots of fun guests on and and lots of great content. So I mean, it's it's been worth it. It's been fun, but. Uh, Eventually, you get a little bit, uh, a little bit tired. <laughs> we get a little slap happy. This is probably where we get like pretty good um, behind the scenes laughs if we ever recorded them. These are the time. This is the time where we've been recording. Um, so we're actually recording our second show tonight. June is our anniversary month, but it's also a very busy month for you and I showing. So sometimes it gets a little tricky with schedules and trying to figure everything out. Um, but. We're, we're, we have a great show. We have great guests. Uh, we really didn't want to do a best of this. Uh, a lot of times, sometimes we'll throw in a best of if we're really busy. But this month, we really wanted to have all our guests on, all our, our friends that make this show happen. So we hope you enjoy this show. And uh, we, we're horse showing and all the things this month. But I think you'll really enjoy it as we go through. So we're going to have a commercial break from Kentucky Performance Products and get right into it. This Nutrition Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, the company that simplifies your search for research-proven nutritional supplements at kppusa.com. If you've ever had a horse with diarrhea, you know what a frustrating problem it can be. Finding an ingredient that works to dry up the diarrhea becomes a high priority. It turns out that researchers have found one, a yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. It has been proven to improve and halt episodes of diarrhea. It supplies specific nutrients to the lining of the small and large intestines, and these nutrients promote healing of irritated tissues. It also supports improved starch and sugar digestion in the small intestine, reducing the opportunity for imbalances to occur in the hindgut. Nalox Advanced, made by Kentucky Performance Products, contains Saccharomyces boulardii, along with a blend of fermentation solubles and stomach buffers. Nalox Advanced is recommended for horses of any age that are suffering from diarrhea. It also supports a healthy digestive tract in horses at risk for gastric or colonic ulcers, such as performance horses or any horse that is constantly on the go and exposed to stressful situations. For best results, Nalox Advanced should be fed on a daily basis. This Nutritional Minute has been brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. You can find all of their terrific products at kppusa.com. Well, tonight we are so excited to have friend of the show. She's been on since the beginning for the 10 years. She is a small R judge and an international Grand Prix rider and trainer. Katie Pogue, welcome back to our show. Thank you guys for having me. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years and congratulations to you guys on the success. Oh, thanks. Well, we we really su- have been successful because of you guys, our friends that come on and, and help us make it successful. And we were so excited to have you for our our show this month, our anniversary month. We're really excited. And um, we were chatting, uh, we were just talking and I said, oh, hey, what you doing on Thursday night? Uh, but we were talking um, a little bit about, I think this is something that happens a lot in the summer when people go on vacation or if people are starting to look at new horses. I mean, all three of us have seen it and there is always a little anxiety from people 
when they get on either a friend's horse or if they're going to go try new horses. You know, the three of us get on new horses pretty frequently. And, you know, I'm sure we all have protocol on what horses we're going to get on and what horses we don't. And that's maybe a different discussion, but there is for sure anxiety when you go get on a new horse, especially if you've been riding a particular horse for a long time. So we wanted to kind of just have a discussion about that and how you help people with that, et cetera. So I'll let you take it away. Okay. No, I think it's a great topic. And recently, for example, I've had um, a student that went out of town and another student was at the barn and they worked it out that while she was out of town, the friend was going to ride her horse and keep it going. Cause we have some shows that we are going to do. And, and the, I mean, I, just, just to say, this is a great idea. I think, you know, really, if you can get some experience on a different horse, uh, to, yeah. you, you know, you should go ahead and do it. And, you know, as long as, you know, you kind of, you know, your friend and you've seen the horse and you, and, and, you know, that kind of would be a comfortable idea to you. I, I think, um, trading horses, I mean, it's, it's fantastic to kind of sort through some issues and, and figure out your problems. So, you know, um, if, yeah. if you can, yeah, if you can approach it with a, a positive, you know, as a positive experience and a learning experience, you can, uh, you know, you can build more success to your own riding program. Definitely. And you know, safety is first. And, mm-hmm. you know, these, these two riders and their horses, there aren't any unusual quirks with them. Um, and so, you know, I felt confident that the one rider would enjoy and learn and also help the other rider while she was out of town. And first, we did a lesson together and just kind of did some basic walk work and kind of gave her kind of a a guided path for the couple days that she was going to ride and some things to work on. And like Philip said, it's, I think it's helpful um, to ride different horses because we're all after the same end result. But when we're comfortable with our own horse, we kind of get stale to certain things and riding a different horse helps us almost pay attention more even to ourselves and our position and the horse and their straightness and their alignment, you know, and all the the basics and training scale. And it it was helpful. And so we did a lesson first and kind of set the stage for um, the next couple of days. And she had a great time and I think was able to reflect on her riding. And for me, kind of the same thing carries over when you're trying a horse and trying to come up with a plan on a completely different horse. And, you know, I think it's important to watch the rider that's presenting the horse. And then if I'm with my student, you know, we would either agree that, yes, this looks like a good horse and I'll sit on the horse. And by all means, sometimes they're horses that you just know it's not the right fit watching. And then when I get on the horse, you know, I'm trying to, you know, decide if the horse is safe, comfortable, and and suitable. at home, yeah, suitable, and suitable for yeah. the rider, suitable, yeah. Um, and that you know we have gone through kind of a game plan at home on their horse as far as getting on, doing some simple walk work, getting familiar with the horse. How does the horse react? Does it react nicely? Does it overreact, underreact? Does it look like the rider that was presenting the horse is involved with their hands or, you know, very tight with their legs? You know, we're trying to decide, you know, in kind of a little bit back to self-reflecting and knowing kind of what our own tendencies are. And if we have, if I have a rider that I know when they get nervous has tight legs, then, you know, we'll practice some, you know, individual relaxing body parts and kind of incorporate breathing to it and, you know, be able to get in a good focused place and then feel like we can mimic that again on the horse that we're trying and think about, you know, Hey, last week in this lesson, remember when we did this walk work and some halts and walks and changes of direction and 
seeing how the horse moves off the seat and the leg, how it reacts to the rain, how it moves sideways and stops and goes, you know, all just kind of the, the, the basic things and then taking it up to the trot and just feeling comfortable, kind of little baby steps and then building it from that. And I just, I always want my students to feel comfortable and, and take the time. And then also too, if you're fortunate enough to go retry the horse or even like my student at home who got to ride her friend's horse a couple of times, you know, then it's nice because you can think about your first ride and if you enjoyed it and go back again and repeat the whole ride, maybe add a little bit more to it and feel more comfortable that you can influence the horse better with the seat or the legs. And, and, you know, I think that the tightening of the legs and kind of a a freezing of the arms has been kind of the most common nervous body distraction, I guess, um, from kind of what a rider, my students have really been able to ride and get through. Those are kind of the key places that just sort of trigger. And it's, it's going to those places and knowing that those are the tendencies. And like I said, finding ways to do little exercises and moving the horse to kind of let your body breathe and relax so that you can enjoy it and, um, and learn from it. Yeah. And the other thing I think before you get on the horse and, and is just ask, how's the horse with a whip? Because I think a, a lot of times people will, Oh, well, this is, you know, the, this is what I use on my horse. And it's like, eh, you know, just ask, I always ask, or, or if I don't know, I, don't start with anything and then I can move up and, and that works right. well. No, I, I agree with that. I think, um, you know, for most of my students, I've advised the same thing. Start with nothing, ask, ask them, start with nothing. And then, you know, build if you feel like you need to, because it's easier to add to it and, and take the time than to feel too much too soon and overwhelmed and kind of put yourself in a uncomfortable situation. But no, I have, I, 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 sorry, I have a, a, a funny little uh, story about about crying horses and, and, and all of that, you know, um, did the whole interview with the, with the owner rider and, and, um, and then I got on and just going along and, you know, it's all fine. Right. There's, there's no problem. And then, and then the, then the owner's like, oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't tell you, or, or I didn't ask you, you don't have car keys in your pocket. Do you like in a real like, uh oh, I was like, uh, actually, no. But is that a problem? And she's like, oh, uh, no, no, that's not a problem. Uh, and I just like went, OK, I'm not buying this horse now. <laughs> that funny? That was a year. Like, they're, they're always they're always little quirks, it seems like. There's always. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I mean, you hope you that, just... that somebody's going to tell you about them before you get on, you know. And then, right. And, yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> no, I, but that, I, it's important. Yeah. yeah. No, it's important. And I went and looked at a, a young horse years ago and we were outside and it had been a little drizzly and the person, I mean, I think the horse was maybe 30 days under saddle and the person got on and was riding and the horse just kind of started romping around and you could tell it was kind of, it was like, it was looking around, like it was being chased by something. And the guy had kind of like a rain jacket on and it was just rustling Mm -hmm, really mm -hmm. weird. And it just was enough that the horse was startled by it. And, you know, he's like, I'm, I honestly, I don't know what's going on. And, you know, he hasn't done this. He's been really good. And yes, he's young. And, and then the next day he had called and he, obviously I didn't sit on the horse because I just wasn't going to. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, he just, you know, apologized and said they figured out that it was the jacket and, and all that. And, um, but no, and, and to that point, when looking at horses, or even if your friend says, Hey, will you ride my horse? You know, you don't have to, like you, you can also go the other route and go, you know, I'm just not comfortable and, and not do it. And then also too, if you're trying horses that you can look at a horse and just say, you know, it's, it's not worth it. And I've sat on a horse, um, or multiple horses that, you know, were okay and got on and just knowing my rider and she's looking at the horse going, Oh my gosh, this horse is so beautiful and my type and everything. And knowing the tendencies of 
my student, it, it was not going to work. And I had kind of, you know, watching the rider that presented the horse, you know, I'd already kind of started thinking what I was seeing and putting things together. And then when I sat on it, it was like, nope, this is, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate work. it, but this is not, not going to yeah. work. Yeah. I think and, we've all had that think, experience. And, and then our yeah. client rider is just so disappointed and like, Oh, you don't think I could ride that? Oh, the horse was so like, I just, you, you just have to trust your trainer to say, I know you and, and you're a great rider, right? I mean, it's not a confidence thing. It's, it's just like, this is not the right match for you. Even if, you know, even to the client that you're acting in their best interest, it's not that you don't want mm-hmm. them to get a horse or don't want them to have the next right. totalist and, right. and all of that. It's right. just, no, we, it, we do care. We want them to be yeah. successful. We want them to have fun. We want all of our students to learn and and have good experiences and enjoy all the things that we've come to enjoy over the years and all the things that we've learned and and sharing that with them you know it's it's important it means something to us and so you know for me and I know you guys too I mean we're going to be straight up and honest and say that no it's it is not worth it and there are other ones out there and we'll find the right one and lo and behold then something yeah, Actually and, and, really and, cool and, other, come along yeah. and it might take time in that situation. They're like, well, you didn't even let me try, you know, and it's just like, you know, we're not going to waste the the seller's time because I know this is not going to work. Like I like I don't need to put you up there to to watch it not work. You know, it's just, you know, it's disappointing. Right. Because, you know, you you see videos, you're like, oh, this could be the horse. And, you know, and and from the client's perspective, they're like, oh, this is a real possibility. I'm going to go there and. And, uh, you know, or like, why didn't you, you know, we'll just take more lessons or it'll be more in training and, you know, that kind of thing, you know, um, people get their hearts, you know, kind of set mm-hmm. and broken in this process of, of going and looking at horses. Uh, that's tough. That's a tough situation. It's very tough. And there's some horses, you know, that are just, they are beautifully advertised and are incredible horses. and you know, it's, they are for someone. And I think as, as long as the horse has three good gates, safe, has a good personality, you know, those are the things that then you can, you can really bond with and, and learn and enjoy your partner. And just also trying to keep, you know, getting hung up on the most beautiful horse and, and all of that and really look for, you know, something that, is a good match and that you can work well with and, and it just, it ends up working out so much better. <laughs> yeah, it does. And, and I think, um, you know, it, it, I, I tell my students, it's like, it's like going on dates. You know what I mean? Like the first time, the first day, it's been a long time since I dated, but you know, you, the first day is literally just getting to know that horse and getting right. to know, and it, it is it worth a second date? Sometimes I would assume you walk in the room and you're like, yeah, I'm not staying. No, nope, no. Nope. And that's okay. Yep. It, you, you don't have to stay, you know? And I think right. that's really important. Um, and that's why you, you take your trainer and that's why, you know, I also tell people like the first day it's really hard unless you're really good at getting on horses and get on, on a lot of different horses. It's really difficult to go get on a horse and ride it well. I think that, so I I do tell people that. I'm like, look, my expectation is that you feel comfortable with the horse and you basically want to to ride it again. Uh, My mom once said to me, this was trying horses. She's like, if you can't sleep that night because you're so excited about going to ride that horse, then it's worth going back. But, you know, if you're just, if you're riding a horse for a friend or you're getting some experience, you know, the first ride is really just that familiarization time and just, give yourself that time and know that that's a skill too, to be able to sort of, that's why you take us, you take your trainers with you. Cause we're used to doing that. We see X amount of horses per day. Um, and we do it all the time. So I think that's really important to think about. Um, and don't think you're going to be able to, to ride, you know, if you've never ridden the Grand Prix, you're not going to get on the Grand, uh, Grand Prix horse and ride it because it has done the Grand Prix, for example. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where I was going with it, too. I was just thinking about that. It's like, you know, if, you, if you're if you going to buy, uh, you know, uh, a pre-St. George schoolmaster, you know, on that first trial, it'll just be walk, trot, canter. And that is fine, right? you got to get yeah. to know each yeah. other. you got to feel comfortable. Nobody's 
nobody's going to make you try to you know bang out a line of fours and then a, and a line of threes. That's not the expectation. And if your friends, if you're doing this as a favor to your friend or something like that, then start really, really, really basic. You know, walk around on a loose rein, get comfortable. The horse doesn't know you, and you might have yeah. some some strange ways of asking for things or or whatever. Like, doesn't matter how high the horse is, you know, what level the horse is trained to. You are just trying to, at first, you know, make a little bit of harmony, right? You know, right. walk, halt, halt, walk, you know, do the very leg yield and whatever. And yep. okay, and may, maybe you're going to feel checklist. like, yeah, you're going to feel like, oh, oh, I, you know, I, I, I was hoping to really, you know, uh, ride some flying changes if you're riding a your friend's horse. No, not, not the first ride. It's got, you know, you got to, you got to take your time with all of that, right? Yeah. In fact, please yep. don't. Your friend would really prefer you not to, I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? All situations right, don't go out and push all the buttons. Yeah, you know. It's yeah. Just, and I think, too, that just comes back to, you know, even understanding our sport, um, how important the basics are so that, mm-hmm. you know, they they always come out. They're the most important thing. Whether you're at a big international competition, day one, familiarizing your horse, whether you are riding your friend's horse, whether you're at a a show and trying to control your nerves, whether you're trying a horse, you know, always being able to have the basics and let the basics be even kind of a level of comfort that you know that you can do those things and communicate with the horse and and be successful. And then little building blocks on top of that. No, it's so true. Um, And and know that it's going to take a little time and be okay with that. Um, You don't have to go to, you're not going to go to the Olympic games on the first ride. It's not going to, it's the way our sport doesn't work that way. So it doesn't matter. Nope. (laughs) So I love it. Well, Katie, this has been such a fun conversation. And if our listeners have questions, how can they find you online? I am at Katie Pogue dressage at yahoo.com to email me. Feel free to check in or ask any questions. And um, this was great. I greatly appreciate you guys keeping me a part of the, the family. And um, <laughs> of again, I'm so excited for your success and time flies. It's been a lot of time fun. flies. Thanks, Katie. It does fly, doesn't it? We're still, we're still in going to young riders just as yes. adults now. Yes. <laughs> thanks, Katie. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm April. And I am Laura, and we are the hosts of the Rain in Your Herd podcast. Where we help with building an online presence for your equine business. So this can include online marketing, social media, blogs, YouTube, online memberships, courses, Facebook ads, and websites. We give you the tips you need to dive in on these subjects and also interview other equine business owners who are doing it well. We have a lot of fun doing it. So we hope to see you over on Rain in Your Herd. Well, tonight, it truly is an honor for our 10-year anniversary to literally have our longest sponsor and truly our friend <laughs> on the show, um, Karen Isberg. She's pr- uh, president of Kentucky Performance Products. She's a rider. She's a mom. She is the best horse on the world, named Oreo. And we're just happy to have you on the show to, to reminisce a little tonight, Karen. Well, happy anniversary, Reese. I, know. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Where did the time go? See, I don't know when you're having fun. (laughs) (laughs) It does. It does. I really, you truly have been on with Phil and I since the beginning when we, the shows did start. So people know a little bit about the history of the show. The show did have several episodes before Philip and I started. And then I started, um, and Karen was a sponsor already. And I started a little bit before Philip. I had two or three episodes before Philip um, started and, um, it really truly was, was a joke. Like we, we thought, okay, we'll just do this for a little bit. This will be fun. And I, it's crazy 10 years later and Karen, I don't even know, we didn't do the stats on how many shows you sponsored, but first of all, we have to thank you so much for your support and believing in podcasting. Like you were so cool. How did, what made you choose to do this? I mean, this was pretty well, I mean, you know, Glenn came and sat down and talked to me and I had actually discovered podcasts at that point and and was listening to a few of them and really liked them. So when he sat down and said, I want to do some podcasts in the horse world, I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, you know, sometimes the horse world is a little behind, mainly because horse people are outside and they're busy and, you know, and they're not, they're not following technology as much as somebody that's maybe sitting behind a desk. Um, so it was just, it was great. I mean, he, he said, I think we can make this work. And I thought it was a great idea. And I'm like, let's, let's do it. This sounds fun. This sounds exciting. So I like to be cutting edge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it kind of podcasting lends itself to horse people because we're always, like you said, we're always outside and uh, we're, you know, kind of doing chores for, for much much of our day. So, um, you know, it's great to have a, a, a bit of a distraction or some entertainment while you're choring and, you know, mainly mucking stalls or, you know, doing stuff like that. So in that way, it matches the lifestyle very well, you know, or driving to and from the barn if you you know if you're driving to the barn yeah. a half hour you know uh, each way then of course podcasting is great for that too i think all of our listeners would attest to that and now that you know i remember when i first started listening to podcasts i listened to them on my little ipod and now now you can get them on your phone i mean it's just it's so easy and there's a million different ways to stream them and i mean it's great it's a great yeah. learning tool i think I, and, and entertainment. I mean, there's just some, you know, look at horses in the morning. It's, you know, it's a really funny show to listen to. So it's great. It well, I don't know if really we're quite well. as funny. We, I don't know if we're quite as funny. We, we try to go for the more educational well, <laughs> tools. You but, guys you know, are educational. Sure. Yeah. yeah. We've had some laughs. <laughs> yes, we you were have. just laughing <laughs> before we got on the show. Phil had the ice cream truck go by his window. <laughs> we really were laughing about that. He was very excited about the ice cream truck. We had to tie him to the chair to stop him from running out the door. Yeah, we got a show. We got a show to produce. We got lots of guests tonight, so I yeah. could yeah. not run it. But I mean, it, it really did just stop right outside my door. He probably knows me. <laughs> he you, probably you, definitely knows. You have a, te- a, a tremendous amount of, of, what's the word I'm looking for? That you didn't run out there and just get an ice cream. I, I don't know that I Yeah, restraint. Yes, yeah. restraint. I, thought, I did restraint, think you would. Yes. <laughs> See, this um, is the stuff people don't, don't know that actually happens on the show that we actually laugh about. Because Phil's like, wait, the ice cream truck's here. Actually, it's the <laughs> yeah. first time this year. It's the first time this year. So uh, so I, I did show tremendous restraint on that one. Yeah, you did. You did. You, did. you really <laughs> did. I was impressed. I would have been out the door. Ice cream. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. Well, Karen, I mean, you've taught us over the years about so many things. And we, we, I personally, I, I personally use Karen all the time on diets. And, and when we have horses that come in that I need to change things around or that I'm not thrilled about something or, um, but we really have, we're going to, Phil, you're going to talk to us a little bit about, about a product you used. We also use it and have had really good luck about it with it, but you've had um, good luck this last weekend. Well, I, um, you know, I've talked over the years about, uh, about a certain horse that I, that I ride and, um, you know, I call, I call him my little badass and, um, you know, he's kind of been moving up the, the levels pretty successfully. Um, but this is the year where he, you know, he got bumped up to the, to precinct George and it's, you know, there is no longer, uh, room for him to have his little badass moments. It's, it's, it's time for him to grow up and, and get, Get, in, get to being a, a more easygoing, successful show horse. And, um, you know, somebody, uh, you know, kind of said to me, well, you know, is he, you, you can try uh, a magnesium supplement. And then I went, oh, wait, um, Kentucky Performance Products has this great, you know, has this product that I, I'm going to try. You know, it's called Trouble Free. And uh, it's got magnesium and some other things that Karen's going to tell you all about. Yeah, uh, Trouble Free is is a great product, and I use it, and Reese has used it, and we've used it with our young horses. I used it with Oreo when I was introducing him to the horse show. And basically what it does, it, it the unique ingredient in it is alpha-lactobumin, which is, uh, which is a, a, a whey product. Um, and it's Trouble Free is a, a newer, more advanced technology than your basic magnesium, B vitamin, tryptophan-based products. Horses don't tend to develop um, a tolerance to it um, like they will some of the magnesium products. So you can use it and it works every time. So what it does, instead of making, it doesn't make a horse dopey. It just, it just um, takes the edge off. It takes the anxiety away because it increases the serotonin in the brain. So you take the horse to the horse show and then they're, when they're not anxious and they can pay a little bit more attention, they can be focused and they can learn while they're doing their job. And that's, 
that's where we developed it for. And we've gotten that feedback over and over again from the field that that's exactly what it does. So, Yeah, well, it certainly helped this horse. I mean, we uh, we started on him on it uh, kind of two days before the show, you know, and and. I mean, I didn't re- I didn't notice uh, there was a huge appro- improvement in the first couple of days. But, you know, when we when I got to the show, I'm, I, you know, I'm normally having to spend a little extra time on this particular horse, you know, just to uh, get him going before we can actually, uh, you know, get into, you know, doing the movements or whatever. And, and basically, um, he walked off the trailer. He was quiet in the stable. We tacked him up and and. Uh, and he just seemed really, really, really settled. And normally I would lunge this horse before getting on him at a horse show. I was like, you know what, let's, you know, I really want to, to uh, you know, believe in this product and to, to give it a good try. So I said, you know, I, I, I can, can't just get on him. So I did and I walked him down and, and we started our warm up. And uh, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I had this really focused, ready horse, just like at home where, where he would come out of the stable and be ready to work. And, and I just had this horse with yes, energy, but not this distracted sort of, uh, energy that I would normally have to deal with. And so I, you know, got him going, got him around. Um, my, uh, my coach was with me. So I was, you know, working with my coach and she's like, wow, he looks, he looks really great. Um, so we actually had a bit of a shorter session rather than the normally, longer session with him at a show and and he was uh pretty pretty great all, all weekend you know while we were supplementing him um uh, with this trouble free product so i think you know in my experience he's never going to go to a show again without without having uh you know a couple of days before and during the during the competition of this uh this wonderful trouble free product that's great and that's how we recommend that's how i recommend you use it too is i use it the day before and then the day of, and the reason you didn't see much difference at home was because the horse isn't anxious at home. Right. But when he gets anxious, it's when he goes to the horse show. So you were able to reduce that anxiety with this particular supplement. And then therefore you got the horse that you have at home at the horse show. So that's, so that's he's no great. longer, he's no longer my little badass and he can just go to <laughs> horse shows and, and be pretty focused. And, and he was like 66% in his first uh, priest and George. I mean, that's, I was wow. so happy with that. Yeah. Really, really great result. And, and it, what's nice is it doesn't make them dopey. It, do, it doesn't have any kind of sedative effect. Like your trip to fame sometime will make them a little bit dopey. So you have that energy that you need, but you don't have to worry about them being so distracted. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. I mean, I, I thank you for developing this yeah. product. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and. Oh, well, you're welcome. I'm so thrilled that it worked the way it was supposed to for your horse. That's, that's, that's great feedback for me. That makes me happy. <laughs> And it's true. We did the same thing when, when we were showing, um, oh, we had a bunch of young horses that year when we were in Florida with Oreo and, you know, a lot, of, we, we were giving it out. At one point I was like, can I have some too? Karen said, no, but I, I, <laughs> no, it's not going to work for people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. She well, said it I didn't was, know. Uh, just, just anecdotally, I was saying, oh, you know, like this is, I'm trying this product and you know how I am talking to people, but, um, and they were like, well, you know, I take a magnesium supplement to sleep better and, and all of these, uh, you know, different things are out there. So is, is there any like maybe, maybe not with horses, but like some human research around around these these ingredients or, you know, where oh, where, sure, where, sure. where was the. Um, well, yeah, the magnesium sorry. has been around for, for quite a, a long time. The issue with magnesium is it only works if the horse has a deficiency. So if you have a horse that's got a deficiency, you, you give them the magnesium calming paste for a while and it works until you correct a deficiency and then it stops working. And you'll hear that from people. Well, I used it for a while, but then it stopped working. And that's why we put this, this other unique ingredient, the alpha lacbumin in there, because while we put the magnesium in there to address that, if that's an issue, um, the lactoalbumin actually does um, work to support an increase in the serotonin that's produced in the brain. And the serotonin, of course, is that calming. It also has a couple of has some B vitamins in it and things that are also related to um, to to just normal brain function and most of and much of the work that or the the ingredients that we use in horses originally started with with human research. I mean that's kind of where we get the idea and then we we take it and we try it on the horses and see if we get a similar response. 
So, yeah, there's definitely human research that shows that these ingredients work that way. It's research on the ingredients with horses and other species as well. So we always look for a look when we're looking at ingredients, we always look to see if there's a body of work that shows that the ingredient is working in different in different species as well as we try to find research in horses. And if there isn't, we try to do some. That is so cool. Well, it's a great product. We, and and again, um, we've used it quite a bit as well. At competitions, it's competition legal. So that's important to to say. You, you know, you need to make sure that that it's legal with your national federation, but it is with ours and um and and Canada as well, I think, Phil. So oh, yeah. um yeah. you know, it's it's a great product. And um we thank Karen for calming all our horses' nerves um as we as we go forward. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes in a it comes in a paste that you can use and it also comes in a powder. And okay, I have we were, yeah, we were using their horses powder every and, yeah, day. Yeah. 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 We have, I have people that feed it to their horses every day. Um, just, you know, they just want a calmer horse and they do that and they've found that it works really well. So my daughter feeds it to her horse every day because she's a yeah. thoroughbred filly and she gets a little goofy sometimes. So, okay. Well, she I'm going to, my next thing is, uh, I don't have any horses to start till uh, maybe the fall, but, uh, but I'm, I'm going to be trying it and uh, yeah, starting horses. I mean, we, we all need a, a, a calm experience and a good experience. So good uh, idea, Phil. Oh, so that's that's. Oh yeah, point. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear how that works. And you, you should maybe use it on a couple of, but not on all of them, and compare. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, I, this, I, is I, this is a study. This is not a study. Phil, just don't die in the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a good, it's a good idea. I like how Karen's just like you know, sacrifice your body on one. It's totally fine. It's for research. <laughs> yeah, you no, be, no, no, no. You know, we don't want Phil to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, that that's not for me. Yeah, you should probably talk to, uh, yeah, you know, the cult start starters and in, in, in something like that. <laughs> but it should give them, you know, if it reduces that anxiety, they should learn faster. Because they're when you're less anxious, you can learn better and be more focused. So that's absolutely that's one of the hypotheses that we have with with the calming products in general. So I love it. I love it. Well, when I'm calmer, I learn faster. So that makes sense. Yeah. So I yeah. love it. <laughs> well, Karen, as always, we can't thank you enough for coming on the show and being our partner for 10 years. It's amazing. And how can our listeners find you online if they have questions about this product or any other product that you have? Well, they can go to um, kppusa.com, which is our website, and we have a, a huge body of work in there in our library with all kinds of information about all kinds of different things, and then a lot of information about our products. You can go on Facebook. Um, you can always private message us from there or just post a comment on our page, Kentucky Performance Products, and you can always call the office uh 859-873-2974 and talk to my staff. And if you have a question that they can't answer, they'll recommend that you, they'll um, send your number to me and I'll call you back. So lots of different ways to get hold of us. And and it's just been the most fun 10 years, Reese. I mean, I, I'm always <laughs> excited to be on the show. And I can't remember, were we sponsoring you when we started this? I think we were. KPP I was already sponsoring I don't remember if KPP, how long? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I think the show? it's been yeah, it's I think so. partner with our I show. Think I, may have long time. Yeah. I think I may have mentioned your name to um to Phil. I mean not to Phil, to Glenn and said, This is somebody you should try. <laughs> because <laughs> you you're always very you personable and always, you know, well spoken and a good teacher and you know, I mean I I'm pretty sure that we were already sponsoring you at that point. It, it, that's possible. I, you know, we'd have to look the yeah. records up, wouldn't we? It's been because I think I we've sponsored since I've been here at my farm, and and I've been here at Maple Crest for twelve years. So that would make sense, yeah. Karen. Wow, gosh, how time yeah, really does fly. So. It it really believe. does. And so it's you know it was easy because we we use the products every day, and I'm constantly asking Karen how we can sort of change the products or interchange. You know, if we have a horse that's maybe changed over time and, you know, we really do work really closely with Karen. Like that's, that's not just on the show. Like I call Karen at least once a month, at least probably more than that on, um, Hey Karen, we have this problem and we've, we've really tackled some really challenging horses together and it's been amazing and life-changing for those horses for sure. Yeah. And it, it's just, that's one of my favorite things. I mean, that's why I got into this business to help horses. And so my favorite thing is to help people with their horses, you know? Yeah. 
We should talk about going on. What can I do? (laughs) I love it. Karen, we'll, we'll talk to the listeners about um, our journey with Mike. Uh, We've had some, he's interesting. Mikey's been interesting and how we figured him out. Um, So we'll, we'll bring him on next time we, we, we do the show. So that'll be a little teaser for everybody. Yeah. Sounds good. That'd be fun. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. We can't wait to talk to you next month. And again, wow. Just say another 10 years. I don't know, but for sure. Another five. Oh yeah. Another, oh, it'll another be 10. Before you know it, Reese, it'll be 10. <laughs> we'll be on here 20. Phil and I are going to be really old at that time. I don't know. There'll be <laughs> you, new, you, new I family. will be really, really old. <laughs> <laughs> I will be way older than it. you. <laughs> Karen looks the same from the day I met her. So it's true. A few more wrinkles. <laughs> exactly. I All love right. it. Thank it's you. And we'll talk to you guys. Soon. All right. Bye. Well, I'm thrilled for our 10-year anniversary celebration this month. We have Wendy Murdoch. She's been a huge supporter of our show, and we're always thrilled to have her on. Wendy, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's so great to be able to celebrate your 10th anniversary with you. That is so amazing. I know, a little virtual celebration, but we we were getting ready and chatting because we always chat a lot before the show, and Paul's (laughs) always like, come on, guys, let's save it for the tape. Get it? Get going. But we were chatting. It's all also Surefoot's 10-year anniversary. Yeah, actually, it was 10 years ago, May, where I put the first horse on a pad and uh, in 15 seconds changed my life, literally changed my life. <laughs> wow. That is so cool. Isn't it amazing how, how amazing. things can do that? I mean, it just, just, I mean, Phil and I could say that about the podcast, right? Like we never thought. Yeah, like you just could, probably didn't go in thinking we're going to do this for 10 years, right? <laughs> no, three months. That's the joke. I was going to do it for three months and I did three shows and Phil and I had met at, at the Young Horse Conference and we really needed um, some a voice to play off mine. And we felt like we needed a male voice actually. And uh, not, not that we don't like females. We like females. Um, but it, uh, it was... <laughs> It just, it just, we, we tried some tests. It works better. Yeah, Yeah. it works better and it's easier to understand. And, and Phil and I also, um, were friends and, um, we always sat together at this conference. We always hung out. We had really similar views on training horses. So it just worked. And, uh, I kind no, of it's said, great. Like, hey, I mean, we have to let him talk when, when we're when we're together once in a while. That we do have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean. Oh, he I'm, can jump I'm, in. I'm not the I'm not the the talkiest kind of guy anyway. So I'm happy to, <laughs> to sit back and listen and you know and and learn and that's it. But uh, the show has really brought me out of my shell. Maybe I don't know. Just, yeah. I've 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 learned to to be more involved in discussions rather than, you know, behind the scenes, but, but Wendy and Reese, you guys get going. I, there's, there's no hope. <laughs> that's, that's true. That is a solid, that is a solid thought. That is for true. Sure. And we're just really glad it's radio because like tonight I just got back from the barn and it was like, Oh, I'm so glad this is radio tonight. So it's great that it's a podcast and I just love coming on your show and talking with you guys every month. It's just one of, uh, it's like fun. It is fun. It you is do. fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is yeah it's really that's fun. Why I try and tell, you know, whoever I'm, I'm talking to, like, you know, to, to get guests and content for the show. I'm like, it's not stressful. It's just fun. And, and yeah, for sure. We're, I don't think we're ever going to do the, the live video or, or Skype no. recording or Zoom, you know, that there, there's a lot of that yeah. going along. Okay. Let me just go on, on tape saying I will quit because I'm like, wait, <laughs> I'm showered. I, I'm showered. I am always in my yoga pants. I usually come in. I'm usually two minutes late because that's like the time in which I took a shower and I'm always late for the show and, and Paul and Phil are always on time. And yeah. And so I'm never, never, if, if we I tell, I tell Glenn, he, it came up in a meeting and he's like, we should do, I was like, don't you dare say video. Don't you do it. I'm not, I'm going to quit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and it's so just, I'm it's gonna... so interesting because you don't think, you don't think where something's going to go when you start it, right? You just get right. started with something. Like when I started with Surefoot, I, I didn't plan on all this stuff that's happening now, but it just, it just snowballed. It just has a life of its own. And I think that the, this podcast is in a similar way. It has a life of its own and it just, there's so many interesting things to talk about and people to talk to that it's, it's great. Um, yeah. You know, and that's like what I love about Surefoot is, is I'm, I'm not 
um, like I can't do the same thing over and over again. I get really bored with that. And so what I love about the pads with horses is that every horse is so different and you never know what they're going to do. And, you know, there's some standard stuff like licking and chewing and sighing and all that great stuff that happens. But then horses do some things that you just absolutely wouldn't expect, like the one that fainted. Um <laughs> which yeah, was kind of a shocker, only in an N of one. But, you know, I I have people all the time telling me stories about how their horses have changed from Surefoot. And it's, you know, again, I didn't go into it thinking, oh, there's, you know, I'm going to do this and this and this. I was just like, wow, this is really cool. And I think that's probably the same for you guys. It's like you just get started and then it's it's fun and it's interesting and there's it so takes, much to talk about. A, it takes on a life of its own, you know, and you just – yeah. You and know, it just, just keeps uh, going. And 10 years later, you're like, where did the time go? <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. but I mean, you've de- developed the, the different densities of pads and, and uh, you know, you've got some angled ones. I mean, you're, you're constantly innovating and, and developing. And I'm, yeah, I'm not um, sure that's ever going to stop. No, no, that's never going to stop. And I'm so excited because I finally finished the first workbook. So the Surefoot Equine Stability Program workbook number one is in the can. I have it and I'm so excited about it. It's 114 pages. And I've Whoa. tried for eight years to write this thing. And it's nothing like what I thought it was going to be in the beginning. But it's great because, you know, so many people ask me, like, what pad should I start with? And why, why does my horse walk off the pads? And so in the workbook, I, I go through explaining different horse temperaments, like how different horses might react. Um, and then, you know, if your horse walks off, why, why does he do that? Well, there's a reason for that. There's several reasons that it could be. And I go, th- I list the reasons so that people can understand, okay, well, was it his friends hollered for him or was it some flies or was it that he was just done and he's ready to move? And so, you know, I'm so excited about having this workbook done and workbook number two is already in process. Okay. So there's going to wow. be at least three or four of them, but, um, but I'm really excited about it. And I, I was telling Reese before we got started, I, I traced all the drawings, so I'm so proud of them. Um, <laughs> no, I can't wait to see them, but I'm not an excited artist. about the workbook. Okay. I just have right. to explain, I'm not an artist. And the way I did it was a friend of mine is a painter and she would project the paint, the photograph that she was going to paint and then use that to trace it, to get her template. And so I realized if I, because I've had, I've had dramas with illustrators and I'm not going to go into that now, but I've, you know, anyway, for my other books, I've had dramas with illustrators. I just didn't want to go back through that again. So I set up my Benro projector and my laptop downstairs and I projected the picture that I wanted onto the side of my desk. And then I traced it and after a while, I got pretty good at tracing. And then my um, the guy who did all the design, Michael Vera, he colored them. So that so they're drawings of people I know and animals I know and um, and some cats that I've memorialized. Um, uh, you know, Felicitas had this great cat that just was – he was so cool. I don't remember his name. But he was there when we did some filming last year and slept on the bag. So I, I there's two pictures of him in, in the workbook, too. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm really excited about the workbook because I can give the workbook to my assistants and they can, because not all of them get to meet you. I, I I try to set it up that when you're in town that you can meet my assistants and they can learn how to use the program, but it'll be really good to have have the workbook. I'm excited about the workbook. Yeah, it's um, great. And, um, you know, I've already been getting some feedback and people really love it. And they say that, you know, it's, it's really helpful. And even if you've used the pads for a long time, the, the workbook gets you to think. And, I, and so often, you know, we just do something by rote and we don't stop to think, well, now when I picked up that foot, how was it? You know, did he really, did he lift it easily or not easily? So I kind of have a lot of um, questions and things and places where people can write and journaling and give them examples so that they really start to think about what they experienced or what's going on with their horse. Because so often it's like we, we tend to not pay attention to the detail or we're, you know, we're busy thinking ahead or something like that. And when we stop to pay attention to the detail, there's so much right there in front of us that we we can discover that, you know, if we just stop for a moment or think of a question or, you know, look at something in a slightly different perspective, that we can get an answer to something that the horse has been doing that we didn't understand because we we weren't seeing it in that light. You know what I mean? 
it's like sometimes when somebody asks you a question about something and they they ask it from a slightly different perspective, you're like, oh, of course that's the answer or of course that's what's going on. So hopefully that will help people think about things in a little bit different light and um, and start to understand their horse better. That's really what I hope. That is so cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, Wendy, we can't thank you enough for all the time you give us, for all the laughs we've had with you. We can't wait to continue our partnership. And um, you truly are amazing. You have so many cool tools and so many things that you bring to the show. Uh, We're so excited about the lookup glasses. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And now I have them in eight different colors. Did I tell you that? Oh, I can't wait to see. I have them in pink, green, orange, blue, yellow, red, and black. So you can do men in so black. Cool. Yeah. It's really so fun. cool. I just took a pair of pink glasses. I was really excited about that. I was going to say, my niece is going <laughs> to, I'm going to have to get a pair of look up glasses for my niece and they will definitely be pink. Yeah. Hands down. Yep. So, well, very cool. Well, Wendy, thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us. And uh, how can our listeners find you online to get more info? So they can find me at murdochmethod.com. That's with an H-M-U-R-D-O-C-H method.com. And the lookup glasses are there in the shop. And so is the workbook. And of course, on Facebook, Murdoch Method and Surefoot Equine. And then if you're a fan of Surefoot, join the fan of Surefoot group. Um, it's a great group. We've got, oh, I think, like 6,000 people in that group now. And they yeah. share stories about their horses. And, the, and they ask questions about Surefoot. And they you know, put up success stories and, and it's, it's so much fun. It's really cool to see how, how horses are changing and people are really loving the experience of doing surefoot with their horse. That's really great. So cool. Well, thank you so much and keep up the good work. I know you will. I will. And we'll talk to you again next month and happy anniversary to all of you. Cause I know there's behind the scenes folks too, that have (laughs) been there with you for 10 years. Absolutely. Wendy, thank you so much. And we look forward to all all, more things to come. Okay. Take care. Well, Phil, we have really been enjoying our Trust Design halters. I've been using the rose one. My little Neo looks so cute in it. And he's been going out to the horse shows and going on field trips. And I've really enjoyed dressing him up. Um, And you guys were at your horse show as well. Which one were you guys using? Uh, we were sporting the the blue one. I forget what its official name was, but I, I needed to go with That's that nice one because it's kind of really, really the the manliest <laughs> one. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a couple of, of girly ones, which is probably the right skew for you know for horse girls and, and all of that. But I I try to have manly blue as my theme, you know. Yes. I love it. I love it. Well, they're great halters. They're really fun. They have fun designs, some manly, some kind of girly, uh, which we love. And we thank Justin for all his support of our show. Uh, we so appreciate him and what he's done for our podcast and believing in us. Um, and we're, we're thrilled to be able to support our halters and we have a discount code, right? Yeah. Um, you're going to go to trustdesign.com. So that's T R V S T design.com and uh you know pick out your halters and on checkout the 10 percent off discount code is hrn and that that helps uh the company track you know where where are the the buyers coming from you know uh the the listeners of our show are hearing uh the commercials and uh, and buying the halters so we appreciate it when when you go and, and enter that code Well, we have a very exciting trainer tip of the week. And actually, we have our producer, Paul Stevens, on. Paul is actually has been with us for two and a half years, almost, yeah, a little bit longer. And we we basically forced him to come on the mic for this tip because um, you guys never hear from Paul. We wanted you to hear from him. Um, we When we hear Paul in our ears, it is not necessarily a good thing. Um, something has happened and he has to fix it, or he's telling us uh, that we have to improve. And I will say, since Paul took the reins of our show, uh, we have actually gotten much, much better because Paul does not put up with anything. And uh, he's really amazing. And we wanted you to meet him. So Paul... I'm glad your mic's actually on for everyone to listen. I'm terrified. 
Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and yeah, how how you got into producing podcasts and, and that uh, kind of thing. Well, th- there's a reason why I'm not on the mic and behind the mic. That's because my nerves get the better of me. So normally I'm sat back in the chair, listening to you guys do your thing, sitting here and snacking on things and pushing buttons, and then having coffee. Yeah, having a good, yeah. yeah. As, <laughs> as you uh, as you can tell, uh, Paul is in England when we're recording in the evening, so it's. It's kind of the middle of the night uh, over there for him, and uh, he stays awake and he listens to to <laughs> dressage talk, and um, you know helps us out every week. Yeah, Thursday nights are my late night. On Friday mornings, I, or my Friday mornings, while you're all still asleep, I'm sitting there editing your arms and your ears out and trying to make you all sound beautiful. But, you know, you, you, you make my job quite easy, I must admit. You know, you're true professionals. It's all good. Oh, you lied. Wait, okay, maybe maybe you've trained us better in the last two and a half years to be better so you don't have to edit as much. But now now we won't even give it because you, you can just feel Paul's like, <clears throat> And we're like, all right, we'll do it again. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you got into podcast producing. Oh, it's a, it's a long story. I hope you're all sitting comfortably. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, I, I, I've always been into music and I started in the music business many, many years ago uh, as a, a music engineer. And I, I worked for the rock band The Who for, uh, I don't know, about six or seven years, something like that. And then moved into TV and I did about, I don't know, 15, 15 years or so working uh, in TV and doing lots and lots of different things. And then uh, life changed and I had a family and I started uh, yeah, working from home and doing different things and uh, kind of fell into podcasting and, and picked up that using all the skills that I sort of learned in my career before. And then one fine day, I came across Jemmy, who is uh, the boss here at Flintstone Media. And um, she gave me a job. And uh, the rest, as we say, is history. Yeah. I don't think I was really nice the first time you produced for us because I wasn't in the loop. I, I just, it's because I, was I wasn't like, there. I, it, yeah, it's because I wasn't there. And, you know, we're, and, we're a dynamic and, duo. And actually, yeah. I, I, I uh, take care of some of the, the computer stuff, uh, show notes and whatnot. And so... Reese was really upset with me for not. Well, well, I don't remember what it was. Yeah. yeah, you missed a flight. Like there was something that happened. Like yeah. it wasn't anybody's fault. And then I got thrown in with a new producer. And I was thinking, I was so mad. And Paul's like really calm and sweet and nice. And Paul's like, it's okay. We'll be able to do it. And I mean, I was not probably not very nice. And I'm not usually that grumpy. And now I'm, if I'm just grumpy, I say it and the boys just laugh at me. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know if you remember that, Paul, but I remember being a little salty when you first came on and then you won me over. This has come up a few times in the last two years, but I must admit, <laughs> I don't really remember. I mean, I've worked with some divas in my time. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, there's, there's a few stories I could tell you, but, uh, you know, uh, names change to protect the innocent. But no, I, I, I don't remember. I only remember good times. You're always laughing. You're always smiling. So it's an absolute pleasure to work with you guys. And, uh, you know, I congratulate you on your 10 years. I really do. Oh, well, thanks. And I will say, um, probably again, you know, you look back at the pandemic time and, uh, that was a tough time for everybody, but, you know, I think the three of us created a a cool community because during that time, um, it was Thursday night. It was something to do. <laughs> we all would get together and um, we could really update each other on what was literally happening around the world and in each of our countries. And, and I will always look back on that time with, I mean, not the pandemic, obviously, but look back at our time together as a group and be very thankful for our Thursday nights because uh, we would all have a drink and we'd sit down and we'd plan a little bit and we'd laugh a lot. I don't know. We we didn't record half the stuff we actually did, but uh, it was really cool. And um, and Paul, you're, you're a huge part of that. And and we felt really, we really wanted to get you on. Everybody, we really had to coax him to do it. Not really, but um, <laughs> to get get you on to to do it, do the show tonight because you are a huge part. And we're so thankful for you. And and you're a huge part of our success. And and uh, we wanted to highlight you. So we appreciate um, you. We yeah. appreciate Paul very much. You're all very, very kind. And uh, Phil, you said one day you're going to get me uh, sorted out with uh, a horse over here because y- you said that you've <laughs> you got contacts in the UK here. That, well, uh, one yeah, day I'm I mean, get, you've, I- learned, you've learned so much yeah. by listening to our show for for a while that you're going to just be able to just train it. 
I, it's I, a standing joke. I know nothing. I know nothing about horses. And the, the, everything I know about horses, I've learned since listening to the show and working with you guys. And um, I'm still not sure which end I should put a halter on. So, uh, <laughs> But you know about trust design halters yeah, well, for sure. If I'm going to put a halter on, it will be a trust design halter. That's for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> And we were very proud of you. We got Paul sent us an art. We have a WhatsApp chat, and Paul sent us an article on Charlotte Desjardins, and I was so proud of him. I was like, <laughs> Paul, you've learned so much. <laughs> she was on the news or something, and you were like, Oh my gosh, I know who that is. Uh, I would try and take a minute before each show, and I'd quickly jump on and Google <laughs> right latest news in dressage, just so that I would, could, could actually come up with something so that they didn't think I was as stupid as, uh, as as I may appear. But, you know, I think I've got away with it so far. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Well, Paul, thank you so much also for your time and energy and your hard work and work ethic that goes into the, um, I, I, I do no technical part of this. I literally sign on to Skype and that is what I do. Um, and then um, Phil really works hard. Phil does some technical stuff. Uh, and then Paul, does all the rest so we're very very thankful for you paul and uh exactly. look forward exactly. to more shows yeah. you're very kind thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, long may it continue and i'm only concerned now that i'm going to have to edit myself which is something that i don't think i've ever <laughs> done before so okay there we go thank you very much first guys. time for time for everything thanks paul well, as always, we love email and Facebook shout outs. We've been getting fun shout outs for our 10 year uh, anniversary shows this month, and we really appreciate it. And we love hearing from everybody. Uh, this is why we do the show, and we truly enjoy, um, truly, truly enjoy those, those emails and shout outs. So keep them coming. And as always, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. I think the best way to find me is probably through Facebook or my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors for allowing us to put on a good show. That's Kentucky Performance Products, Surefoot Equine Stability Program, and Trust Design. If you'd like to support our show and the Horse Radio Network, you can do that through the auditor program found at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back, and we will talk to you next week.